One of these men is the first man in history to climb Mount Everest. What is your name, please? My name is Sir Edmund Hillary. What is your name, please? My name is Sir Edmund Hillary. What is your name, please? My name is Sir Edmund Hillary. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Sir Edmund Hillary and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Now may I introduce our panel. First, oh boy. Welcome back, Polly. Polly Bergen. Thank you. Have a wonderful vacation. Marvelous. Good. Marvelous. Next, our guest star this evening, Mr. Lloyd Bridges, star of Sea Hunt. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit? I, Sir Edmund Hillary, climbed my first mountain at the age of 20 in my native New Zealand. Since then, I have climbed mountains in the Swiss Alps and the Himalayas. On May 29, 1953, I achieved the supreme success, an accomplishment for which I was later knighted by Queen Elizabeth. I am the first man in history to conquer the world's highest mountain peak, Mount Everest. Signed, Edmund Hillary. As you heard, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Sir Edmund Hillary, first man to conquer Mount Everest. Are you all ready to play our game, gentlemen? Very well, let's begin this first round then with Tom Poston. Tom, please. Thank you. Uh, first, Bud, may I uh, address my remarks to the three gentlemen who are on the panel, one of whom will have to be Sir Edmund Hillary. I am welcoming you to this country again and uh, thanking you for making your appearance on our show. It's an honor to have you here as a reason for your first visit to America in five years. I'm sorry, I don't know which one of you I'm talking to, but... <laughs> Hillary, I always thought Hillary was a marvelous name for somebody that climbed mountains. <laughs> Can you imagine if he had a guide, Dale Evans? <laughs> what do you hear from Rudy Valley? <laughs> uh, Sir Edmund, number one, uh, as a native of the southern archipelago or something down there, what is a storm and strife? Storm and strife. Yes. Do you know, sir? Could be a wife. <laughs> Number two, what is uh, your what is your answer to a bottle and stopper? A, I didn't catch the question. A bottle and stopper. Well, uh, <coughs> the usual uh, bottle, I imagine, and uh, the usual stopper. <laughs> Number three, do you know what a bottle and stopper is? No. All right. Well, you know what I'm doing anyway. Number three, Polly Berger. Number one, what is a bottle and stopper? I still don't know. <laughs> you don't know either. Uh, number two, could you tell me, what is that thingamajig that has a point and you hammer it in and you tie a rope to it and then you climb up and take it out and put another one in? That's an ice axe. What is an it? An ice axe. Ice axe. Uh, number three, what is the thing that you drive into the mountain to climb on? Um, an ice spike. Number one, do you know another name? Piton. Uh, number two, uh, how high is Mount Everest? Uh, 29,141 feet. Very nice. Number three, at what, at what uh, height did you, were you forced to use oxygen? Um, 21,000. Number one, do you know? Uh, 26,000. Number sorry. two, do you know? About 21,000 feet. Lloyd Bridges. Uh, number three, it says here that you climb mountains in the Swiss Alps. What about Mont Blanc? Did you ever get to the top of that? No. Number two? No. Number one? No. Well, I can't ask anything about Mont Blanc. I made a picture there called White Tower. And uh, I ran into a guy at the time, and uh, he had frozen off uh, his, the, the, uh, his toes on both feet. Uh, number three, uh, he told me that uh, it made it a lot easier for him to climb. Now, why would it make, him, make it a lot easier for him to climb with his toes off like that? 
I suppose you wasn't falling over them all the time. <laughs> Where did you say? Oh. Uh, can you give me a better answer to that question, number two? Well, his uh, feet would be somewhat shorter, and it's possible that that might help him, and also he'd have less weight to take up to the top of the mountain. <laughs> What's your answer? Oh. Kitty Carla. Number one, what was the name of the Sherpa that you took with you up to the top of Mount Everest? Tenzing Noya. Hmm? Tenzing Noya. And uh, number two, uh, what is the second highest peak in the Himalayas? Uh, K2. Uh, number three, what is Annapurna? Um, it's a peak in the Himalayas. Not the second largest? No. Uh, number three, one, what did you wear when you were knighted? <coughs> I wore a dressed suit, no? Top hat, claw tail, striped trousers. That's it, panel. Time to vote. Without consultation, as always, will you please mark your ballot and select thereby number one, number two, or number three. Team of challengers, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, have you all marked your ballot? Everybody, Polly? No. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. I, uh, I really don't. No. No. Okay, for whom did you vote, Polly? Oh, I don't know. I voted for number one, but uh, they all seem to know something about it. I don't know anything about it, so I guess their answers were all right. But I, uh, the number one said uh, uh, pitons, which I've always heard of what those things are, but you drive in and <coughs> tie a rope and go up. And so I figured maybe it's him. Okay, Lloyd, your selection. Uh, number two. That's who I really think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do I give my reasons? Yes, if you will. Well, I think he had a lot of right answers there, especially about the, uh, uh, the toes being frozen off. It does make it a lot easier to go around the ledges. That's what my guy told me. Uh -huh. I said I wouldn't go to that extent, though. <laughs> Kitty, who do you think is the real one? I tell you, I voted for number three, but I am so impressed at facing Sir Edmund Hillary that I've got to tell you the truth. I did not hear any of their answers. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I it's too fun. exciting for words. Whichever one of you is Sir Edmund. <laughs> All right, Tom, who do you think is the real one? I'm, I'm really impressed. I, I thought it was number three, and, and uh, I, I'm afraid I had to go by ear this time. Uh, something about... The speech. I know that Sir Edmund is from down under, and uh, I went by the speech. But I was really impressed, too. Uh, I, I, it's thrilling. It's uh, wonderful to have the gentleman here with us. All right, sir, there you have it now. Ladies and gentlemen, the way we made up our minds and the way we voted, whether it's right or wrong, we'll discover right now. Let's see how you're doing, too. We'll find out which one of these three gentlemen is the first man to conquer Mount Everest. So may I ask the real Sir Edmund Hillary to please stand up. Let's find out about the other two. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? Sir? My name is James Wadham. I build and sail ocean catamarans. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? Uh, my name is John Gaiman, and I sell insurance here in New York City. I've never been to New Zealand, and I've never climbed a mountain <laughs> in my life. <laughs> find that there are exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500. From Marlboro, before I say goodnight to you gentlemen, I have a very distinct pleasure and privilege that I have to perform right now. Uh, as a special function for me, it's in behalf of Argosy Magazine. And I have the honor to present to Sir Edmund Hillary this 1959 Giants of Adventure citation, awarded annually to the man who has brought new glory to the field of adventure. Together, sir, with this check for $1,000. And another little memento for you, sir, up here is the original oil portrait that was made of you and currently appears on the cover of Argosy Magazine. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen, I hope... Uh, you enjoyed your visit. We certainly enjoyed having you here. You did an excellent job. And on your way out, you'll find a carton of Marlboros for each of you. Enjoy them. Good night, good luck, and God bless you all. <laughs> and let's meet our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth Daniel Squire. What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth Daniel Squire. What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth Daniel Squire. Follow along with your copies of this affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, Elizabeth Daniel Squire, am a newspaper woman. I started as a society reporter for my local newspaper. Later, in a foreign country, I was a reporter in the field of marketing. Currently, I write a nationally syndicated feature article in which I answer questions sent in by readers. Its title is Helping Hands. I am a palm reader. Signed, Elizabeth Daniels Squire. Three charming ladies this time, panel, all claiming to be Elizabeth Daniels Squire, palm reader. All comfortable and ready to play our game, ladies? All right, let's start this cross-examination with our returning voyageur, Polly. Polly Burke. Thank you, bud. Could I check and see if they know whether our option's going to be picked up? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> uh, number two, as a newspaper woman who has a, 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 a thing about reading palms, I mean, I always thought that a person went in and you looked at their hand. How do you read somebody's palm when you write a newspaper column? Do they send in a hand print? Or exactly. Something? Oh, they send in a handprint. That's right. And that gets all the lines and everything. Yes, if the print is done properly. I see. Uh, number three, uh, does the thumb have anything to do with palm reading? Oh, yes. All of the hand does. It does? What is, the, what, what, what is there about a thumb that's different? Well, if it's big, you have a strong character. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and number one, is there anything else? Well, if it um, bends back, as I see yours does a bit, it might mean extravagance. Uh, uh, Lloyd Bridges, please. <laughs> uh, My two. husband would agree with that. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, we've been having a little trouble with rain over in the park. Like we got a show going on, Guys and Dolls, and, and uh, uh, the future last week has been a little rough. Can you tell by looking at my hand that uh, this week is going to be a, a good... We're going to have uh, clear skies? No, I can't, can't tell by it. looking at your hand. I might no. by looking at your eyes, you know, wishful yeah. thinking and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, can you tell from the lines there, can you tell uh, anything about the... Uh, what, are the lines, what do the lines mean? Is the top line, is that the uh, heart, is the life line, death, death line? What, what are they? What are well, the there lines? is no death line, thank God. No. But there is a life line, a heart line, and a head line. There is, huh? Yes. Well, Kitty? Number three, do you believe by your own efforts that you can change the lines in your hand? Oh, yes. You do. Which is considered the hand you were born with, in quotes? Uh, the left hand. The left hand. And you believe you can change the lines that you were born with by your own efforts in the right hand? Uh, the lines in my hands have changed. They really have. Number one, you ran a society column. Yes. Uh, what city did you run it in? I did that in Boston when wow. I was in school. I thought it was going to be Palm Beach. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I think it, you said that it depends on if your thumb is very large, <clears throat> that it means you have a strong character. Large by what standards? Look. Well, large in um, proportion to the rest of your hand. Oh. What does it mean when you... Tom Poston. Thank you. But well, could, would you mind, could I uh, uh, go closer and uh, take my hand over there? Be my guest. Ask go the ahead, girl. Tom. Sure. Yeah. Come along with me, if you will. <laughs> Uh, could you, uh, would you, <laughs> would you tell me uh, what uh, this line, that line is? Well, that's your he heart line. This is your life line, and there's your head line. Welcome to What's My Line. <laughs> <laughs> could you tell me, tell me what this part of the, can you see this all right? Tell me what this part of my hand is. Well, that's the Mount of Venus that shows love and passion. <gasps> Uh-huh. <laughs> Where's the Mount of Becky? Is there such a thing? Could you deter could you find that on my hand? Find what? The Mount of Becky. Well, I don't know which hands it's in, but it's in one or the other. Both of them. Both of them. Yes, that would be right here, and it would show you your 
lunar possibilities. Uh -huh. What? Loony possibilities. Loony possibilities. <laughs> it's very small in I think hand. she's trying to get away with lunar, but we think it's loony possibilities. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm sorry to have to stop it there, but it's time to cast your vote. So if you take your hand back and mark your ballot with it, I'd well, appreciate it. Well, I have it. to cross their palms with silver. Oh, you do? I see. Oh, 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 the gypsy in it. Okay, Tom. Mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. An and again, as you did before, select oh. by doing so number one, number two, or number three. Everybody mark? No, uh, make it quick. Gee, mark you ballots. Were close to Tom. Hey, up, Tom. I have to ask you to hurry, because you have okay. to mark before I call on the others. Okay. Polly, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Uh, they all seem to come up with an awful lot of answers, but number three sort of used a couple of very long words, which I didn't know the meaning to, and said that her lines had changed. So mm -hmm. I thought maybe she was. OK, Lloyd, who do you think is the real one? Two. Number two? I don't really have any particular reason. She's very handy with me. <laughs> Kitty? I believe it's number one, because of the way she grabbed a hold of Tom's palm, and it was all terribly confidential in the way she said what she said. I didn't hear a word she said. You didn't hear? No. Tom, what's your vote? You're still excited about Sir Edmund? You can't even hear these? <laughs> I voted for number three, bud, because we're in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm sorry we are, but there you have it. Let's find out now how well we did. <laughs> And in doing so, uh, discover how uh, you've played at home as well. Okay. Now, we'll find out which one of these three ladies is the real palm reader. May I ask the real Elizabeth Daniel Squire to please stand up. Thank you very much, Squire. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Elnora Hayes, and I'm a hand model for television commercials. I open refrigerator doors, do laundry, <laughs> spread cheese. <laughs> Thank you very much. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do? Yes, my name is Fran White. I'm the president of Fiestar Incorporated. We make fertilizer. Thank you, ladies. I hope you've had as good a time as we have in checking score this time. We find there are two, again, incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Thank you very much. On your way out, you'll find a card in Marlboro's for each of you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> we'll get back to the game. Just... Again, panel, will you follow your affidavit copy? I, Jean Rio, am French and come from a long line of horse breeders and trainers. What is your name, please? My name is Jean Rio. What is your name, please? My name is Jean Rio. What is your name, please? My name is Jean Rio. Follow along, if you will, with the balance of the affidavit. As a young boy, I saved two of my father's best stallions from the invading Germans by living with the animals in the woods for three days and nights. Currently, I am head trainer and driver for one of France's outstanding stables of trotting horses. I am in the United States to compete against six other countries in the first international trotting race to be held this week at Roosevelt Raceway, New York. The horse I will drive is Jamin, acclaimed as the greatest trotting horse in European history. Signed, Jean Rio. Gentlemen, this time all claim to be Jean Rio, trotting horse trainer driver. We'll start this round of questioning with Lloyd Bridges. Lloyd? Uh, number three. Is uh, Jamin, Jamin, is it? Jamin. Is that a stallion or a mare? Stallion. Which is considered the faster of the two genders? A mare or a stallion? What you say? Which is considered the faster horse, a stallion or a mare? Stallion. Uh huh. Uh, when is the trotter uh, considered at its prime, when, you know, to do its best work? What you say? When is the trotter considered to be at its prime when it goes the fastest? How old should the horse be, trotter? You may consult with each other, gentlemen. I know there's a slight language problem here. They don't understand perfectly. Uh, well, uh, you, you, you arrived in, uh, just recently from, uh, from uh, uh, abroad, uh, number three. Number three, you yes. arrived here just recently? Yes. Kitty? 
Number one, who um, owns the stable you run, you race for? Madame Ruderio. Uh, number two, I read something unusual about these European horses. Is there anything unusual about Jama? Well, uh, mine likes uh, artichokes. And maybe that's what you mean. <laughs> Has he had any recently? Artichokes, yes. I mean? Well, uh, no, because uh, they, been a, uh -huh. they have been uh, not released by the customs. <laughs> number three, how do you say trotting race in French? Trotting. 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 And how do you say pullover in French, number one? Chandai. You don't say pullover? Oh, well, some people uh, say pullover, but it's English. Huh? Down portion, please. <laughs> uh, well, I, it, it, I don't know any French to speak of myself, but I know I've read a couple of expressions. Would you number two, could you translate jouis de vivre? Joie de vivre? What is it? Joie de vivre? Oh, translate that. That's uh, joy of uh, living. Living? Don't look at him. He's not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Number three, what is a barb? Barb. Barb. What do you mean? Well, like an Arabian barb. It's a bad joke in Arabic. Holly? <laughs> uh, number one, uh, where the, the Grand Prix is held in Paris, is that road on its way closer to Versailles or Fontainebleau? Closer to Fontainebleau. Closer to Fontainebleau. Blue. Number two, where do you think it's closer? I think it's... I mean, is, uh, uh, which road is it on towards? Actually, that's... Uh, well, it's close to Versailles. Versailles. Number three, where do you say? Vincennes. Uh, num <laughs> That's it, panel. It's time to vote once again. Will you please mark your ballots? Voting for number one, number two, or number three. Is everybody marked? Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, uh, I voted for number two. I don't know anything about horse racing, but I know that we passed the racetrack where they were holding the Grand Prix on the way to Versailles, not on the way to Fontainebleau. So number two said Versailles, so I voted for number two. Okay. Lloyd Bridges, what about your vote? Uh, I voted for number two, too. <laughs> because uh, it was a little too obvious he'd be here in his riding thug, so he's got to be the right one. You know, it's too much. Okay, Kitty. Polly's mixed me up with all this newfangled knowledge about <laughs> where everything is in Europe, but I voted for number three. Well, he and, said Versailles, too. And your selection, I Tom. He I thought he said Marseille. He said Vincennes. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anyway. I don't even know how to pronounce the joy of living, for goodness sake. But I voted for number three. Yes, I did vote for number three. Okay. <laughs> there we have it now, and uh, we'll uncover the identity of the real trotting horse trainer driver. Right now, so be prepared to have your own guessing or voting as whatever you may be calling it at home, proven right or wrong. Will the real Jean Rio please stand up? Thank you, sir. Uh, number one, would you mind giving us your real name and tell us what you really do, please? My name is Hubert Lemieux, and I'm Consul and Trade Commissioner for Canada in New York City. I've never been a trotting. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? Uh, my name is Captain Jacques Cachot. I am uh, Assistant Manager in the French Line, and uh, I know nothing about horses. <laughs> Thank you. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having you here. And checking up on our score, we find there were two incorrect votes, as in the first two rounds, at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Thank you all very much. Success in the, uh, the trotting race when it comes off. And uh, on your way out, you will find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Good night. Good luck. Ladies, may we have your special attention because we are about to witness a situation that could happen to you. That's all we have time for tonight, except Lloyd, thank you very much for being with us. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was Come back to see us you. again. Thank you. And uh, Kitty, we hope you have a wonderful trip. Kitty's going abroad. Be away from us for four or five weeks. Have a good time. Thank you, darling. I'm going to check on where that racetrack is, Polly. Okay, okay. you do that. <laughs> 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 Next week, Monique Van Voren will be here with us on the panel. 
I guess that's all for the vital statistics department. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Bud. Good night. This is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth, the Market B. Bill Cogman Connection, in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Dahl.